Hello again, this is Craig. Uh, once again, I'm doing another testimony fail video in which um, this one I want to speak about Dungeons and Dragons. So, most in, our, in the Christian culture, there is a lot of, um, I want to say stigma, a lot of bad connotations that come with the name Dungeons and Dragons. It's ma mainly regarded as an evil game that draws kids in and then brings them to do witchcraft and do evil and most likely hurt themselves in some way. Um, in truth, none of that is actually real. It's a lot of hype. Um, as I've said before in my other videos, I am a Christian. I do believe in Christ. I do follow God's word and love people as God, or try to love people as God loves everybody else. And with that, we're not, we're not perfect people. And, uh, but also there's, there's no such, to me, there's no such thing as any object or game that is inherently evil. Um, there are some things that are considered evil because they focus more on what is against God. Um, as far as this game, not really. I've, I play Dungeons and Dragons. I've been playing for a few years and I've done research on the game. And why, where all this hype came from. And it came from like pretty much back in the 80s when it first came out. Or around the time it first came out. And uh, one college student ended up killing himself. And the only thing that they could really find about this student. Because he was, he was very introverted. He didn't have many friends. And the only thing that they really found about him was that he played Dungeons and Dragons. And there were a lot of rumors that he played in the sewers of the college and a whole bunch of hype just to kind of stigmatize the or demonize what happened to him. And there's a woman, I completely forget her name. And I guess that's my bad on not researching it back again. But there was a woman who created a lot of hype saying that the game drew the kid into witchcraft and into constantly thinking of evil to where he couldn't do anything but kill himself. Um, I'm not too sure how true that is because a couple years later somebody, another kid, killed himself and all they could find was that he played Dungeons and Dragons but he was also very introverted, he was also very lonely, didn't have many friends. I mean, there's a huge, just not having very many friends, being alone, that's recipe enough to commit suicide. I mean, I should know that since I've always felt very alone and wanted to commit suicide as well. So saying that a game was a single cause to somebody committing suicide was really, really bad argument. But same woman again argued that the game caused it. So Christian community from then on put a really bad connotation with Dungeons and Dragons. To where it's an evil game shouldn't have anything to do about it now most of the reasons why they say that is because it deals with magic it teaches you magic and then it could cause you to harm yourself or somebody else uh in reality that's not really true uh if you look <laughs> i've been playing i've read i've read most of the D, &D books pretty much all the ones that y you need to play the game and it doesn't teach you about magic it doesn't it doesn't give you like it doesn't force you to do anything evil it it's a fantasy role playing game where you create a character um well let's just start back with this it's sort of like a video game but in your head uh, if you ever play role-playing video games, you're a character, you run around in a world, and you do a bunch of different things. Like, uh, Skyrim is one of the most popular ones out there from the Elder Scrolls series. And that one, you can run around, pretty much do almost whatever you want. And 
role play. <laughs> Whatever you would like to role play. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons is basically the same. Except it's all in your head. And on a piece of paper with a bunch of numbers and statistics and mathematics. So it can get complicated at times. But uh, basically you create an imaginary character. Somebody called the DM or Dungeon Master creates a storyline of some kind and for the characters that other people create to interact in. And basically that is all the game. That is the basics of the game. And they dis in the books they describe a lot of stuff because they're trying to relate a fantasy world to our world which our world has a lot of good things a lot of evil things a lot of things that are in between all that and the game reflects all of that it also is however the dm decides to portray the world that's also shows and shows a way of relating to where like he can portray it as a dark world or he can portray it as a good world um most of how the game could be considered evil or good is how you play it um the game itself i would say is not evil because it doesn't teach you magic it doesn't teach you how to be evil it just describes what is evil it describes what is good it describes magic but it doesn't show you how to do it it pretty much like if you read a spell every single spell in dungeons and dragons game it re it tells you the name of the spell it tells you the effects that the spell does and then it shows you all the statistics of how it affects the game and the characters that are involved with it but it doesn't teach you any words to say it doesn't teach you like any of the components that it says it has it doesn't teach you really how to do the spell it just says oh my character you pre pretty much you're saying is my character is going to cast this spell and then that's all that happens you can add artist artistic license to it if you want but that's up to the dm or up to the characters and that's pretty much how you play it but that's not how it's described so, to me, the game itself is not inherently evil because it's mainly just describing everything that is already in our world and putting it into a fantasy kind of era. Where the way that I can see it can be evil, used for evil or good, is because it, it, it depends on how you play it. The DM can allow evil characters to be played in which you have a lot of evil characters doing a lot of evil things. Or he cannot allow evil characters and only good and neutral characters in which you're doing mostly good things throughout the world. So that's basically a description of the game, pretty much how it's played, how it can be seen as good or evil it really depends on how you play it and the group that you're with if you're with a group who tends towards evil then yeah the game is probably going to be played in an evil way but if you're with a group who tends towards having fun or doing good things or just messing around it's like you're just having fun and you're doing good things it really depends on the people that you're with not the game itself um but that's Aside from that, that's not really the failure that I wanted to portray in this in this video. My failure with Dungeons and Dragons was mainly how I told my father that I was going to play it. Because my father had the same same connotations brought up to mind that it was an evil game and it made you think about all these evil things that could be that you shouldn't be thinking about and I I basically yelled at him and told him I was going to play it anyways and gave a really bad argument that if a pastor I knew was playing it, then it's okay for me to play. And logically, that, that doesn't make sense. It was a really bad argument. My dad left me alone, but 
I still feel really bad about doing that because <laughs> in, in the way I look at it, I could have done so much better in trying to convince them that it's okay to play because it's not an evil game. It's, it's just a game and how you play it determines whether it's used for evil or good. Just like, um, we'll use, I'll use a very basic tool. A shovel. A shovel is not really considered evil, because what do you do? You dig with it. You do... That's pretty much all it's functioned for. But, you can use it for evil by hitting somebody with it, to where you end up killing them with a shovel. So, a shovel could be used for the good function of it that it was made for, which is just digging, or it could be used to kill somebody. It and it, The object in and of itself, the shovel, is neutral it has a function that is intended for good and there are items that have a function that are intended towards good or towards evil but in the hands of somebody it is considered neutral until that person uses it for something whether it's used for its intended purpose or not it can be used for evil or for good just like a sword could be used for evil or for good so a game is in, in a sense, the same way. The game itself is not really evil. It describes evil, but it also describes good, and it also describes what is in between. So the game itself is not evil, but how you use the game, how you play the game, that can be considered evil or that can be considered good. And yeah, my failure was that I wanted to play because I wanted to play. And I didn't, I didn't take the time to think. I, I didn't take the time to try to explain to my father what, what exactly the game was like. I just figured I, I failed in trying to do that by just yelling at him, saying I'm going to play the game, and just believing that he's never going to understand. So, that was basically my failure. But with that. God has allowed me to redeem the game that I've been playing. This game is considered evil, and anybody who plays the game is considered an outcast to the Christian community. Most churches want nothing to do with the game, and if they find out that somebody plays the game, they really don't want anybody want anything to do with that person. And sadly, that's, that shouldn't be happening. I mean, with all the other stuff, with, with all that we teach with Christ being a redeemer, with loving everybody who doesn't judge, and who just accepts people and brings them in as his children and changes them from the inside, it's, it's really sad that the church has made so many mistakes in not allowing God to do that by banishing people away from the church and away from God. And basically we've done that with every single person that plays Dungeons and Dragons. We've banished them away. We've made them outcasts. We made it so that anybody who plays Dungeons and Dragons or who has played it for a long time wants nothing to do with the church because the church doesn't want them. But the pastor that I mentioned earlier is a pastor of the church that I go to called The Quest. And we are a church of gamers. Every single one of us plays Dungeons and Dragons in some form of kind or other role-playing games that are related to that game. We play a lot of fantasy games. We play video games, Magic the Gathering, which is a card game. And what we do with it is we redeem the game. It has a bad connotation, but we bring Christ into the game. And we use, we play the game to have fun. And we play the game to fellowship with each other and to interact and to do all sorts of fun stuff. And which then we can play with people who don't believe in Christ. And when we show that we are believers and that we play Dungeons and Dragons and that we don't consider them to be outcasts well we don't consider them 
to where they should be outcast. We want to bring them to Christ because God loves them as well. God loves people who play Dungeons and Dragons. God loves every single human being. And with that, we want to show that by showing that we can we play this game too and we understand where they're coming from. And we understand that we made a lot of mistakes in the church by ban making them outcasts, but we want to redeem the situation. Just like in the olden days with all the the holidays that we celebrate, they used to be pagan holidays such as like Christmas time was like Yule or Winter Solstice winter solstice one of the the pagan holidays where they would celebrate winter and halloween was uh mainly the harvesting holiday celebrating the harvest and pagans would do a lot of pagan rit rituals that had to do with idol worship or with other stuff and when the church came in we redeemed the holiday we made it so that the holiday could also reflect Christ in some way. With Halloween, when the, the church had everybody dress up as martyrs and go around to show them all the martyrs that have died in Christ's name. For Christmas, <laughs> winter solstice, we created Christmas. We decided to celebrate Christ's birthday on that day. Obviously, um, with historical facts and stuff that Christ was born probably around September or October around probably around either the holiday of Rosh Hashanah or the holiday of Passover so he was probably made, born around those times but we decided to celebrate Christ's birthday on Christmas time and that was how we redeemed those holidays for Christ because yeah we wanted to celebrate the holidays just as everybody else but we also wanted to show Christ in those holidays just as the quest and everybody who's in the quest wants to play Dungeons and Dragons and we also want to show that Christ can be in Dungeons and Dragons as well and so with that um, if you're a Christian even if you're not a Christian, if you want to play Dungeons and Dragons, I would say go ahead. Um, if your parents are uncomfortable with it, just as my parents were, try to honor your parents by either trying to explain the game to them or show it to them and see how open they are going to be to the game and see if the... if see how the game can be redeemed so that it is a good game to play rather than all the hype that they hear of how evil it is also if they if they feel uncomfortable with it then don't play it around them like for a few years i didn't play dungeons and dragons because i lived with my parents and my parents were uncomfortable with the game so when they expressed that i decided that it would be better not to play it and then when after a few years, that's when I started making mistakes in how I treated my parents. My, that was my main failure. But so that you guys can learn, honor your parents by respecting their wishes. If they don't want you to play the game, then as long as you're in their house, don't play the game. Or maybe play somewhere else. Or find, if, find a way to help them understand that the game is not evil. But then also honor your parents by listening to their wishes towards you. Because if you listen to your parents, they are going to, that's definitely going to lead you to a better life. And then when you move out, you could play the game then. So I would also say to research the game, research the history of how it got that bad connotation, research the game itself and see how it's played and what it does. You know, I've only given you snippets about it because that's, it's just a little bit of what I've experienced for the f past few years. But I just wanted to leave you and let you understand that in all things, 
especially if you're a Christian, all things you should be having Christ come into your life. And Christ should be pretty much consuming your entire life to where everything is related to it. In which you do that by honoring your parents. So if they don't want you to play the game, don't play the game. Or if they don't want you to do something, like listen to them because your parents want the best for you, just as God wants the best for you. But then at the same time, realize that you can redeem the game. God has given you the power to redeem everything that you touch. Anything can be used for good. Anything can be used to bring Christ to somebody. And so, if you decide to play Dungeons & Dragons, play with people who are like-minded with you, who also know Christ, or even if they don't know Christ, also prefer to do good things. Because I have played a few games where people who weren't believers were really... All they wanted to do was evil stuff and all that, and it was a little bit hard to play with them because I didn't want to do those things. And so I, I created a character to be good, and they created a character to do evil, which really doesn't help in the game. And it also doesn't help with your fellowship with that person, too. But understand that the game is about fellowship with people, and that it can be used for good. Just as Christ came down to earth and has redeemed us from all sin, no matter what sin you have done, no matter what evil thing you have done, you can always come back to Christ and confess it to him, and he will forgive you and bring you back up. It really doesn't matter what you have done, and it doesn't matter... There's always the old saying of, I can't be forgiven for this, or God won't forgive me for this, because it's been too evil, I'm too stained, or something like that. And that's, those are all lies. I mean, Christ came down to earth. He, God himself, came from heaven, was brought, brought himself to earth, lived among us, lived as a human. And then died on the cross to redeem every single human's sin. We made the mistakes. We decided that we didn't want to follow God in sin. And he himself tore himself apart. Just so that he could bring us back into communication with him. So that he can bring us back to being with us. And us being with him. So... With all the power that he displayed by dying and then by resurrecting in three days. I mean, what what cannot be redeemed? Everything can be redeemed. And with that, when we realize that all Christians should be able to redeem everything that they use. Because we have the power of Christ in us. And Christ loves every single person that is out there on the earth and with that we should be showing that love to every single person and we can show that love by redeeming things that were usually intended for evil or have been hyped up to be thought of only as evil and we can redeem it we can use it for good and so i'll leave you with that and that just remember to honor your parents to redeem that which is evil or considered evil because Christ has given you the power to use anything to bring people to Christ and to allow healing and restoration to come into another person's life. And so I'll leave you with that and work on other videos.